So when I was 10, I developed an eating disorder, anorexia. And thank goodness I did, because if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be standing on this stage today. So I want to give my greatest appreciation to Rebecca from the past for every lie and secret held, for every rule and ritual abided to, and for living so stagnantly for 12 years. Now, that may sound slightly off-putting, and in fact, eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. But if it wasn't for me really experiencing anorexia's secrets and lies, I wouldn't value authenticity the way that I do today. If it wasn't for the rules and rituals, I wouldn't have that fire in my belly pushing me to really experience and take the risk. And for the 12 years that I lived so stagnantly, waiting for something to happen, I realized that I didn't choose to fall victim to anorexia. But recovery is a choice. It's my choice. It's my decision to take action and I felt like I was waiting for somebody's permission, but really I was just waiting for myself. So there you have it. The most destructive and debilitating part of my life led me to the highest and thriving point. I am really proud to say that I am in recovery from my eating disorder. It no longer dictates my life. Uh, and now I can do whatever I want every single day of my life. I can follow my passions. I make YouTube videos. That's, that's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> um, I make YouTube videos documenting my life in recovery. But I struggled for 12 years, and the 12 years that I did struggle, not one day did I sit back and think, hey, what if recovery enabled me to find my passions, my career even? What if recovery enabled me to build a large online community, inspire others, and then do a TED talk about it. No, that what if never crossed my mind. I tell you what did cross my mind though. I, w I want to recover, but I can't because what if I look different? What if people don't like me because I'm ugly and I'm not good at anything? What if my life is even worse than it is now? What if I fail? <laughs> and these are really real thoughts that would rummage through my head a lot. And it's quite embarrassing sharing those with you because now they just seem very trivial. But those what ifs, those unmeaningful what ifs, were the things that were keeping me back from taking any recovery steps. Notice that what was holding me back were these what ifs that today I find silly, unsensical, trivial, stupid even. But back then, it was the scariest consequence that I could have faced. So really, these what-ifs, they're just fluff, a smokescreen for the underlying fear, the fear of the unknown, the fear of taking a risk and not knowing where it was going to go. Really, I wasn't afraid of the what-ifs, because like I said, I find them unsensical. I was just afraid of doing the thing and not knowing the outcome. When I was in my eating disorder, at the back of my head, deep down, I did want to recover. I wanted my life to be more than just rules and rituals. I wanted to give everything that I had to offer to the world. I had this ongoing fantasy every single day in my head. I wish that I could be free with food. I wish that I could eat what I want whenever I want. I wasn't controlled by calories or exercise. And I find it funny because what I was fantasizing about was totally in my control. I could get up and eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. It didn't depend on somebody else. It didn't depend on luck. I wasn't fantasizing about being this famous singer touring the world. I mean, that is one of my dreams, but um, I wasn't constantly thinking about it. What I was thinking about was totally in my control. And I find that very interesting and I've come to realize that um, you don't just think about things in this way. You don't have that physical urge in your body, that nagging in the back of your brain to do something if you are not capable of doing it. It may feel like you're not capable of doing it. I did not believe that I could recover, not for one bit. 
But I should have taken that constant fantasizing about recovery as a signal. A signal that I could do it. And I needed to do it. And it was the most important and urgent thing that I could do to progress in my life. But also the hardest. Anyways, now you know that I did want to recover and I wanted to recover even when I was practicing my eating, practicing, (laughs) even when I was being controlled by my eating disorder. So why didn't I just get up and do it? Why didn't I just get up and recover? Well, let's go back to those what ifs. I knew that anorexia was keeping me a walking prisoner, physically and mentally drained, hardly living, and I hated it but at least I knew what to expect. In this crazy world that I had made it up in my mind, I was safe. What ifs aren't safe. You don't know what to expect with what ifs. But I needed to do something. I tried negotiating with my eating disorder. Maybe if I took little steps forward to recovery, but still mostly abiding by my eating disorder's rules and rituals, then maybe I could cheat the system. I could get the best of both worlds. I'll give you an example. So my fantasy was to eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, but it also was paired with the what if I look different? Maybe if I eat a little bit more, not what I want, but a little bit more, 200 calories, 500 calories or so, but still being controlled by the eating disorder because I'm weighing the food, I'm counting the calories. Maybe I could trick myself into thinking I'm doing this, but I'm, I'm still doing this but at least I won't um, suffer the consequences. If you can guess, it it didn't work. And I try over and over again, different variations of the same thing, just trying to weasel my way into happiness. But over and over again, I would just feel worse and worse. I spent countless hours on the internet just trying to find answers, hacks, I needed someone to tell me what to do because I was so confused. I did not know what to do. I did not have the answers. But I did have the answer. I so profoundly knew what I needed to do. I was fantasizing about it every day. Eat what you want whenever you want. That signal, eat what you want whenever you want, it's basically a call to action. That's what I had to do, and I know that that sounds simple, but there's no way getting around it. I had to go all in because these baby steps that I was convincing myself were steps forward were actually just me stepping deeper and deeper into quicksand. I stood still as time rushed by me. It took a long time for me to decide to follow that signal And even when I did those what ifs, they were still at the front line of defense. What if you look different? What if people hate you? What if you fail? Okay, what if they do? I tell you one thing, my eating disorder was not ideal. If I make a change that's not ideal, then what have I lost? Nothing. Oh, and also, I can't decide that these what ifs are true. I I don't write the future. For so long, I was living as if I knew what the future held. I knew what recovery held for me. But if I'm living a life that I've already predicted that may not even be true, then I'm just going to be paralyzed. It was my duty to go and find out what the future held, at least. So I started. I started feeding myself. I ate a lot for a long time, and it was very scary. But you don't have to be ready to do it to start. I'm really proud that I am now very much free from my eating disorder. I'm still very sad that it's taken 12 years to do so, but the only thing that I can do now is make sure that I listen to that signal. I listen to myself as soon as I can. Because that signal will come up again in different parts of my life. And I'm not immune to the what-ifs. They are still going to come up again and try to hold me back from doing things. But I need to remember that what-ifs are fluff, not fact. 
And maybe you don't resonate to the story of an eating disorder, my story with an eating disorder. But can you think of one thing that you want to do, you need to do for yourself, but there's just these what-ifs holding you back? Maybe you have a passion for an art form, acting, singing, TikTok, I don't know. And you want to showcase your talents. Maybe you have something deep down that you need to share with someone, a family member, a friend. Maybe you're holding yourself to a really high standard. You feel like you always need to be productive, on the go, 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 go. And all you want to do is just rest. Don't let time rush by you. Go and find out what the future holds. And even if all those what ifs are true, I promise you, you'll survive it. Rejection is temporary. You may feel it for a day, a month, a year. But I tell you something, regret can stay with you forever. Thank you. <laughs>